to Mud Flats Hand Building at Home series. This is video two of the series. Um, in video one, we discussed how to roll a slab. And today uh, we're gonna be talking about how to make a uh, triangular footed mug, um, which is a really fun project and it's easy to do at home. So I'm gonna use a rectangular template, which I've included uh, below that you can um, find. And this is something that's really versatile to make a lot of different projects. But today we're gonna start with the triangular footed cup. So the first thing is I've smoothed my slab, I roll it out. If you don't know how to make a slab or you uh, wanna see the method that I used earlier, you should go back and watch that video. Um, but we're all ready to go. So I'm gonna take my template and I'm going to lay this down on my clay. And the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a pin tool or a wooden skewer, and I'm going to trace it. Really, you can use anything that's pointy. Um, so I'm just going to start here and I'm gonna start at one corner and I'm just tracing, I'm not cutting. So I'm gonna trace down every side like so. And the reason I'm tracing first and not cutting is because if you want to get super fancy and add some texture, um, now we know where to put the texture. So I have this super adorable heart stamp um, that my mom gave me actually. And I'm going to start by um, just stamping this across the bottom. So since I have this um, outline, I know exactly where I want to stamp my stamp. You can use any sort of household items. Anything that uh, shows texture is fair game. Um, one that I actually surprisingly really thought was cool was a um, one of those plastic uh, body roofers, like a scrubber. It makes a really interesting texture. Uh, so try anything. It's you know go for gold. And I'm also going to take this wooden skewer and fold it so that it's horizontal. And I'm going to make a line. Maybe I'll make some stripes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go, and I'm gonna see how I'm going beyond um, the outline, totally fine. Now, the reason we wanna outline this is because once we squish things into the clay, we're making lines, we're drawing, we're pressing, we're rolling, the outline of this could have um, altered a bit. So I'm gonna place my template back on top and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut through. Now I'm using an X-Acto knife, but you can use a plastic knife, a wooden knife, a paring knife, um, anything that's sharp enough to cut the clay. Uh, so I'm gonna cut this flush, so we're holding this tool straight and I'm gonna cut every side out. One thing I didn't mention at the start of this video is that you want your slap to be about a quarter of an inch thick. It's probably critical. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this extra off. Now I have this huge piece of slab that I um, already rolled. This is still usable for something. So I'm actually gonna put that to the side because you never know. And now I have my template cut out and it's textured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently run my fingers across the edges. The top edge is the most important. Run my fingers across. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this so we're making it into a tube. So to do that, I'm going to start with my textured side face up. Again, texturing is optional. You don't have to add texture. Now I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna bevel the edges where we're going to attach them. So that instead of having the attachment just abut each other, it makes it so that they actually overlap with one another and it makes for a stronger bond. And it also, um, you don't end up with that little bump um, where the seam is. So I'm gonna hold my X-Acto at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna come right up to the edge and I'm just gonna cut the corner off of this. So it's hard to see, but I'm gonna show you. So I cut the corner off here 
and then I'm going to pull this little bit off. And now we have a triangular edge here. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to bevel the other side. I'm pulling my tool at a 45 degree angle, just like before. And I'm notice how I'm holding the top of the slab and then I'm going to cut this at an angle. Again, it's like cutting a little triangle off of the edge. If it gets stuck, you can use your X-Acto knife and grab it like a little fork to lift it off. Sweet. Okay, now I'm going to prop this up. I have mine like a little smiley face right now, so it's facing the camera. Um, I always recommend to people that when you're working, you should have yours like a rainbow instead so that you can see what you're doing. Um, but since I want you all to see what I'm doing, I have mine like a smiley face. So now we're going to score and slip the edges together. So these beautiful bevels that we just made are just going to attach together. If you have one of these um, little scoring tools, I call it the ceramic rake. <laughs> we're going to use this. It's just a lot faster. But if not, again, you can use anything sharp. Put a, um, a pin tool or a wooden skewer would work perfectly. So I'm just going to score the edges here. And I'm really gonna rough them up. So it's not a dainty score. Um, it's pretty fuzzy looking. So it should kind of look like Velcro. And then I actually don't use slip. I just use water. So I have a cup of water over here. I'm gonna grab that. Um, you can use your finger or a paintbrush. A toothbrush works really well, an old toothbrush, obviously. And then I'm going to paint the edges with the water here. And I'm going to score them again. So basically, I'm creating slip out of the clay that I'm already using. So um, I don't need to have an extra cup of slip sitting to the side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach these edges together. So I'm going to start with the top press them together, and then I'm going to gently flip this puppy over, and I'm going to smooth the other side. Now with my thumb, I'm going to smooth the interior of the seam. If you can't reach in there, you can also use the um, handle of your paintbrush, the handle of a pen tool, um, the handle of a plastic knife. You see the trend there. Handles are really good tools. Okay, so I smooth this interior. And now if I wanted to smooth this uh, seam, I could do so. I actually kind of like the look of the seam. So I'm just gonna run my finger along it and leave the seam pretty visible. I actually might go totally crazy and take my wooden skewer here or something like my wooden knife. And I'm gonna make it more obvious that there's a seam there. All right, awesome. So now I'm gonna decide what's gonna be the top of my triangular footed cup and what's gonna be the bottom. I'm thinking the stripes are gonna be the top, the hearts are gonna be the bottom. So I'm gonna turn this over. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna score the inside seam all in this interior with my pin tool or my rake. Okay, so again, I'm not being shy about the scoring. I'm just going for it. And then I'm gonna wet this tool. I mean, <laughs> wet the clay. All right, sweet. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hands and make them kind of triangular. And now I always like to have, um, Think about where my seam is since I made my seam visible. And I'm gonna start to just press this in. Now the edges are gonna start to meet. So I'm gonna let them do so because I scored them and I wet them. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm slowly just starting to press these together. 
Now at the bottom, you're more likely than not going to end up with this little gap. And if you're making a planter out of this form, I recommend you actually can leave the gap and that can be the hole for the planter. But if you're making a mug, that's no good. So I am going to take some clay, preferably fresh clay that's still wet, and I'm going to make a little button. All right, so I'm gonna roll a ball, and then I'm just gonna to start to press this down. See how this is starting to crack on the edge? That's why if you use fresh clay, that's even better. But if it is getting a little cracky, smooth it out with your fingers, no problemo. And then we're going to score and slip this button onto the bottom here. What's also super adorable is if you have another stamp, you can stamp it into the bottom. Maybe your initials go there. So I'm gonna score all around the hole. And then I'm gonna score my button. We're going to add the water, score again, score again, and then we're gonna press the button into here. To press the button, I need to make sure that I'm holding the interior of my pot so that I don't go right through to the bottom. So I'm gonna be pretty gentle with it. Now, if you don't like the look of the button, you can always smooth your clay into the bottom. That's not a problem. Since I like the seam, you can guess I like the look of the button. And then I like to take my wet paint brush and just go around the, um, the seam where I joined it, make it a little smoother. And then you guys will spend some time smoothing everything out. Now, I'm gonna turn this over and I have the interior up here that also needs some clay because it looks pretty weird in there right now. So I'm gonna take a little piece of clay and I'm gonna make another sort of button. This one I like to smooth out, especially if it's gonna be a cup um, that I'm drinking out of. If it's another button in there, um, think about for functional purposes, it gets a little bit harder to clean if you don't smooth the button out. So I'm gonna score, I'm gonna wet with water, and then score again a little more gently this time. I'm gonna plop my button in there. Again, I'm holding it from the bottom and I'm just gonna take my hand, gently press it down and start to smooth it. If you're finding that you're having trouble reaching in there, again, this is a part where the handle of like a wooden knife, a plastic knife, it's really gonna come in handy. No pun intended. All right. So I'm gonna smooth that out. And then the last thing I'm gonna do with this interior is I'm gonna fill in the points of the feet. Again, because it's a little hard to clean. So to do that, I'm gonna take another piece of clay. First, I'm gonna roll it into a ball by just rolling my hands together like this. And then I'm gonna make it look like a very tall Hershey kiss. So I'm just taking my fingers like two little pinchers and I'm just pinching them so that I get this little pointed shape. And you guessed it, you got a score and you got a slip. Or for my case, score, wet, score. Still the same. So I'm gonna use my rake in here. I'm gonna score it, score it, wet it, score it. Be good if somebody came up for a song, a song for that. Okay, great. Now I'm going to gently hold the exterior of this pot and then I'm going to press the little button in and then use the handle of something or something to smooth it if your fingers don't reach to the bottom. Okay, so then I would recommend spending some time working on the rim 
pinching the rim with your fingers. And if you wanted to add a handle, now's a good time. So for these type of forms, I typically just add a coil handle because they're a little whimsical, just like the cup. So if I have my triangular footed cup here, super cute. Um, I can actually even take this leftover slab that I had and we're gonna recycle. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're just gonna cut off a strap. And this is probably a little bit on the thick side, but maybe not. And then from there, you can add your handle by cutting the edges. Notice how I'm gonna cut them at an angle. So picture if I had something straight, it's going to cut right through the same angle. It just makes the attachment a little bit better. Again, just like, it's basically just like beveling. And then you can go from here and score and slip this right onto your uh, triangular footed form. So that's the triangular footed cup. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to email me, kate at medflat.org. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.